the stupid things. Batman. 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 <clears throat> So there's three people watching. Mm -hmm. I can't see any live chat if anybody's messaging. Hey up, Paul. Oh, I can see live chat. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm Sam, thanks. I'm a bit stressed after the last five hours or so trying to get this effing thing to work. And eventually the uh, laptop's conked. So um, this is the tablet, back to the old tablet again. Um, well, that's it. I know, no, just me and technology don't get on full stop. I hate it with a passion. I wish everything could just be, you know, dead easy to work out and that, but it never is, is it? So it does me add In a way, I suppose it's a bit of sod's law, really, because I, I should have tested, really, first that it was working before putting up on the Facebook page that I was going to do a broadcast or whatever, I suppose. But you live and learn, don't you? So, well, I've got one of these uh, Logitech uh, webcams, um, one of these things here. And, so, and that's all working well, but for some reason on the laptop, it was saying... Um, cannot connect camera as another application is using it or something. So I was going through all the bits and bobs to turn everything off that was using the camera. And I, I ended up literally resetting everything and it still wouldn't work. So I just gave up in the end. And then just as I was about to turn everything off, the computer turned itself off for me. And then I tried to turn it back on several times and the thing wouldn't turn back on. So. But luckily, I've just checked my receipt, and nothing ever, ever goes well for you, does it? Never. However, I'm three days in the, um, what do you call it, uh, within the receipt, before the receipt runs out, the guarantee. So I'm going to go, but I'm off tomorrow, luckily, as well. So I'm going to go and um, take it back and hopefully get another one. Um, I mean, it was only second hand anyway, because I was just start trying to get everything back up and running. Well, that was it, really. So I thought I'd just come on half an hour because Coronation Street's just finished. So I thought, sad it. <laughs> I know, sad. But I thought I'll answer a few questions because I keep getting a few messages asking about this IDF group build. And, you know, I, I know folk are busy nowadays and they don't get a chance to read a lot of things, but they can just read the you know, the rules and well, not even the rules really, because it's just basic, you know, you just don't try and piss people off and whatever. And, you know, you enter on the date, check the date out and then you sort it, aren't you really? But, um, so I thought I'll just come and try and do a, a quick live um, and answer a few people's questions. But from, I don't know, there's like a, a little person at the top left corner and then a thumb like that. And then it says live and then how long you're broadcasting for on this tablet and then your live messages seem to pop up at the bottom down here but where that little person is i take it that's who's watching at the minute and there's, only, there's, a, there's an almighty three people watching so um you know but then again i suppose after i've annoyed quite a few people this more earlier on probably and they thought sorry i'm not trying again which i don't blame them so I thought while I'm on the bench, I shall just get the my first build, which is the, well, the Merc of a Mark IV, the Mengwon. Um, just as you as you, people who follow me know, I, I like to label my sprues. I know they're labelled anyway, but 
you know, I thought I'd give him a quick label while I'm here and then um, and bag some bits and pieces up. I mean, I I won't be, I'll be entering the builds obviously, but I won't be um, competing for the prizes considering the prize the prizes are there. So, you know, so I suppose in a way I can start any time. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> you know, a few people have said that now, so it really suits you, the um, uh, the beard, but uh, it covers, I think it's more so it covers the double chins. I think that's the, the main, the best part. <laughs> but thanks, mate. Hope you're well as well, Pete. Hope you're going to come in on this IDF build as well. If, uh, if you haven't got anything or anything like that, because of the stuff you've sent me, mate, then... Let me know because I could send you something over because I've got a couple of IDF bits that I probably won't build. So let me know and I'll chuck them over to you with pleasure. As long as you take part, it'd be good that would. So just had Greg message me at the top, but obviously I don't touch the bloody screen after how, how lucky I've been today with technology. So there you go. Oh. I did this the other day, my first Bandai kit. Um, I, I'm well chuffed with Bandai. I've never built a Bandai kit before in my life. Um, it was Mike uh, Cohen. I asked Mike about it. And uh, he says, go for them because they're really good stuff. And um, hi, Greg. Um, and they are the brilliant. They're so easy as well. I mean, that is, that's built up from, you know, like your sprues and that. And there's probably two pops of glue in that all of that that kit. Um, it's excellent, it really is. And I've bought a couple more rare uh, Bandai kits, um, but they're, they're well worth it, definitely. And with being a big Star Wars nut, obviously, you know. Are oh, you at the bench, Greg? Help, Vass. You all right, Vass? How you doing? So if anybody's guys, if anybody's got any of these questions they want to ask us regarding this IDF bill, because I'm only going to hang on for half an hour. Um so I think I need an early night. Um but Greg's on as well. So Greg's the other one of the other admins and uh, Sean uh is the other admin. So if you if you want to ask us anything then put it up in the chat then if I can't ask answer it or miss it, then Greg will probably get it for us. Um, but if that's if there's anything you need to know, because I, I thought it was a bit idiot proof, really, the explanation, but there you go. Any scales, Pete? As long as it's IDF, um, Israeli Defence Force, um, it can be from the it can be from the six, you know, the six day war. It can be from Lebanon. It can be from the Gaza Strip at the minute. It's kicking off there every day. It can be anything. It can be anything from the Second World War that perhaps some of the Israelis, I don't know, marched through Israel or wherever. Um, it can be anything. But the scales I've got here, are the kits are just basically 135th, mate. <clears throat> if you wanted any of them, I know that you, you're playing about with them at the minute. So uh, the different the scales and everything. What about you, Vassi? You're going to take part in it. Be good to have as many as we can, really, because there's some great people coming um, in on it. Okay, Pete. Well, if not, let us know. Um, it's running for a year, mate, anyway, so, uh, you know, you can enter as much as you want. Um. Yeah, Vass, the cut-off date is it's going to start on the 20th of this month. So you've got, like, what, a week and a half or so to join. Um, well, you know, and then it runs for a year. So it's, like, from uh, the 20th of June this year till 20th of June next year. So, I mean, you don't have to start on that date. You know, you can start on Christmas Day if you want to. Um, we'll tell your missus to keep her legs crossed and then get your model done first, and then she can give birth, Vass. No, good, good luck, mate, to you. Good luck. Is it your first fast? Is it your first little one? Well, 
Bloody hell. You're gluttonous for punishment, Bass. Third baby? Jesus. Braden's enough for me. He's a good lad, though, but he's, he's enough for me. <clears throat> good luck, though. Good luck to your missus. <clears throat> the other kit, guys, if anybody's bothered, <clears throat> I'm going to do <clears throat> along with it is that one. <clears throat> That's the other kit I'm going to um, add alongside the make of it. It's going to be like a Gaza strip um, dio, but they're going to be at rest. And then it's going to be the two, I don't know if um, you know, you've seen the, the two uh, main kits um, of the figures that they've done. They've done the infantry with the um, weird head things on top of the helmets. They're called Mes, Mes Net, Net Vets or something they're called. Um, and then they've got the tank crew that are at rest. So I was going to do all of them, but I'm going to leave the RDF infantry out now. Um, and then I'm just going to add the tank crew because I've got a couple of resin uh, figures as well just to add, but they're both at rest. So, hello, right, John. How are you, mate? You at the bench, Greg? That's a good book, guys. There's a review on my channel if you want to have a look at it. It's a cracking one for the, especially for this um, build. You know, this group build. It's got so much in. Um, it really is a cracking book. Um, but there's a, a review on my channel if you want to have a look. <coughs> That's the that's the phantom that's just been finished. And there's a the big small screen on the cockpit that I've done, which has pissed me off. That's from lack of finish because I tried to clean the the uh, cockpits. But apart from that, it's it's all right, I suppose. It's, it's not great, but from that little mistake, as you know, when you balls up a little bit, you get pissed off by it all, don't you? <clears throat> Ten year gap between my oldest and youngest, but my oldest has cerebral palsy. I'm very scared to have another to tell you the truth. Boy, I'm not surprised, Vass. Hard going, mate. <clears throat> Hopefully all will be well with this one, mate. Fingers crossed. Turn out a big Port Vale supporter, so you can't go wrong. Oh, we've got seven watching now. I'm going into the big league now. <laughs> Mr. Riley, if you're laughing at the fact that I said about him being a Vale fan, then. <clears throat> That's the version I'm going to go for on the make of it if anybody's even bothered it's um it was just the fact that the spider web on the back i thought that was quite cool <laughs> that's the only thing that's uh because all exactly the same paint schemes which is the sinai gray one two three four nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two and twenty three there's that different many different shades of gray sinai gray but they're all exactly the same. Yes, mate, yeah. 
absurd. I'm not <clears throat> that one. And I have got Greg. Got a few little bit of aftermarket bits here for it as well, which just to see because <coughs> the barrel's a bit it's just two pieces the barrel. Um and it's it looks okay, but with all these they've got like sort of the thermal uh, metal bits that wrap round it something that uh, keeps it in and I'm just thinking it's gonna be a nightmare trying to sand in between all of them and get the seam line out. So I've got a a metal barrel but it's for your kit uh greg mate uh, the hobby boss make of a four um but of course you know they, they usually fit other uh manufacturers don't they so i'm going to see if that works if not you can have it i'll, I'll chuck it over to you and um i've got this et models um ball and chain armor for the back around the back of the turret to stop the rpgs um, but this looks a bit of a ball ache as well because there's like little tiny little tiny balls and then the chains but they haven't cut the chains into the separate lengths so you've got to cut all the, the different lengths of chain for the balls to, to go on the back of so <clears throat> that's going to be quite interesting to say the least and then I've got some of these um, I've noticed a lot with IDF armour um, a lot of the Merkavas, especially Merkava 4s, have got white aerials, but down towards the bottom of them, um, they've got like the spring, um, so they flop quite a lot. Well, I was reading in a, um, a train magazine, a model train magazine, that they have sort of these little springs on the bottom of um, some of the sleeper cars, and uh, you can actually buy them. Now, I know it's a bit lazy, because you can obviously... Yeah, will do, mate. Uh, I think I got it. I think I got it off um, somewhere off uh, eBay. I think, but I'll have a look because it'll be on the ports list. I know you can the, the springs for the bottom of the aerials. I mean, if you just get a bit of copper wiring and wrap it around a pin or a cocktail stick, that's another easy way of doing the, the springs for the aerials. But um, these are quite fine, so I thought I'd try the railway ones. And um, these are uh, engage, yeah, engage uh, railway little springs barely about 49p so i thought i'll just try to just to see what they're like and then um i've also got for if you look on top of the the nag the nag machine on there that that's a cctv camera i've also got one of them if i can just get it now yeah i've also got one of them for the make of it it says it's for the make of it um for the mark four um because i'd say about 70 percent of the the research i've been doing on these make of fours a lot of them have these um these uh, droid cctv things on them attached on the left hand side of the turret if you're looking down the barrel from the commander's side it's on the left hand side and they have these on them um so i just thought something a little bit different to add because um, these a lot of these um make of the fours they don't have three machine guns on the turrets they only have two they all have the commander's machine gun one on top of the the barrel um and then usually the loader um like on the, the uh, abrams or the um uh, what's it called the charlie the challenger i don't know why i forgot about that um the loaders have machine guns as well but on the Merkava the fours, I've not seen one that does. So I thought just as an extra bit of something different, I should try that. But it looks like a bit of another bit of a long-winded kit to add to it, I suppose. So but we'll try, see what it's like. You can all but try. And then the other bits we've got is just some Israeli flags. And some of the Meng water bottle things. And then I've tried... I've got some of this new AK um, camouflage net just to try out and um, I don't know if any of you seen the videos of it but you have to this is how big it is about that big and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cut the seam off around the edge and then you're supposed to like pull it apart like so 
and if you notice it's got the pattern inside but you can somehow and i'm not sure how you do it but somehow you can and i suppose white glue would probably be your way of doing it your pva glue or something of uh, adding like the bits of um flock and you know the the greenery and that that they can add to them sometimes so i just thought to give that a go as well so that's another try out see what that's like and then can't be able to put that back that's about it really for aftermarket bits i've got for it because we all know I've got a tendency of uh, losing my mojo because I keep giving myself way too many things to build. So I thought I'd better stop there, really. So, but remind me on Greg, and I'll send you the link for that all that stuff I've got. Um, and then, if that of any of you want any decent reading material, um, my research material. I know, Sean, you, you, you were on about doing a tie ran. Um, well, this is quite a good book. Hi, Tom. How are you going, mate? Um, that's uh, one of the Mig Ammo camouflage guys, Sean, if you want. And it's got all proper little pictures in as well of tie rans in, in battle. It's a really good book, actually, this is. And then you've also got you just see you can see that that's okay you've got your proper pictures in and then you should have somewhere where have i seen this now well there is somewhere in there there's some of these on the front like the camouflage colors um but this i think this is about i think about this cheaper than it actually is supposed to be it's about 13 quid but it's like i say with all of these books once you've got them you've got them haven't you you've just got to look after them and then you've got them for life then haven't you really so and um, that mig ammo one which i've done a review on um donald trump's emailed in apparently we're uh, the rubbish uk way very good um but these are these are pretty good that's a very good book and um, there's another one of these sean um which has got like a Another AK, this AK one, this one is this is the Middle East Wars, wars but I think there's quite a few of these because I've got from 1948 to 1973, so you've got um, your early conflicts in there, but these are all your what's it ones. Yeah, just ignore them, John. They've got nothing better to do. That's what I do. Um, so that's another one of them, and then course i've got my beloved osprey books and um, which you've got the modern israeli uh, tanks and infantry carriers 1985 to 2004 i think that was about two quid on amazon on the um the, the option at the bottom if you go down there um you can find out different cheaper options to buy from and, and that's just the israeli defense forces since 1973 so and then this is the one that was on about you sean did you like them then greg yeah i thought they were all right they just i don't know if you found i just found the um um they were just a bit uh dried a bit too quick for me really but i think it's because i was using them for um the modeling so i don't know if i've binned them perhaps not enough perhaps and that's why they were, they were drying like but um yeah i liked them the coverage was brilliant of them and they really were so um i recommend them definitely but i don't know whether i'd um is everybody still there it's just said reconnected for some reason if everybody if robbie williams can support it then you know we're just that good and the, they're all very good looking because Robbie Williams isn't a bad looking bloke, is he? Don't you say anything, Greg or Paul? Bloody Yorkshire lads. Um, Lebanon, uh, that's the one you're after, Sean. Um, 
it's quite a thick book as well, Luke, for nine um, on that uh, naval military site. Israeli Air Force One from the charity shop for 40p, I think. Um, again, just another good one for the stash, but that's for all you wingy guys. And then there's this one, which is the, I think this is a Lebanon one, uh, 1975 from 1981. That's not a bad one. A black and white pictures, but there are some cool ones in there as well. And then this is my most favourite one, um, RDF Armoured Vehicles. It's by uh, the Tanker Grad Publishing one. Um, and the, the it's I've used a few of their books before. They're just fantastic for um, the qualities really is good it's basically like walk arounds of the vehicles and that but they're well worth it that was quite cheap as well i think this was 6.99 off here somewhere i thought this was quite cool it's a m113 and um, but with the axeric turret nag mashing turret doghouse turret on top well that was really good But yeah, that's quite well worth one. And then, of course, images of War One, which is the uh, armoured and Arab and Israeli conflicts. Well, I'd say that the um, paints were well worth the money, to be honest. I mean, what was it, eight quid? Eight, eight pounds, something I used for the the American um, US set. Hang on a minute. That's the set I've got. So you get four colours in that, and it was like seven quid, I think, eight quid from uh, eModels. Um, but I'm sure it'd be cheaper than that if you shop around. And then that one with three colours in, um, which was the uh, the RDF one. Um, I actually bought two of these by mistake, I didn't realise. And um, that was seven pounds something, I think. Um, but I know Greg's just bought that one as well. So. Um, and then I just bought the, you know, your flat white, so you can mix that and black, um, flat black. And then um, I've got the the turquoise for the the Russian cockpits. That's the the aircraft colour one. So that's it, really, guys. That's um, all the goodies shared. Quarter to ten. Whether or not though I'll go back Paul from um uh, from Tamiya, I don't know because just so easy, aren't they, Tamiya? And so so nice to spray. So that's great news, Peter, that you're doing well again. That's really good stuff. It's nice to know. Have I got more reference books than the kits and the stash? Um, I just pick the. I just love books. I think it's miles better than the looking Google. You know, it's. Um, I just find it so good to look through a book, Tom. Really, then they're looking on tappy tap tapping on Google and it, Google's technology into it, and I don't get on with it so. Hello, Vonnie. Books are the best, you're right. And how are you tonight, mate? Everyone's gone quiet. It's because Greg's in. Nail polish rack. Paul, are you trying to tell us something there? Come on now, be honest. I think it's more for your nail nail polishes, shall we say, mate? Will you be in a Yorkshire lad as well? Mm. No comment, mate. 
Yeah, I know you're only joking, Tom. Don't worry, mate. I'll have a bit of banter. Paul, you need to get back on to um, doing some videos, mate, because I do miss you. I do miss um, watching you, some of your stuff you do, because you, you're one top modeler, mate. I'll tell you that now. Have you got a channel, Tom, while you're on here, mate? Thank you, Greg. He does. Thank you. Yeah, it's, that's I struggle with that, Tom, as well. To be fair, mate, with the with the space and that now, I'll, the stash is overtook taking the bedroom, so the cave. So I've had to stick my books downstairs in the garage. Clearly, the garage is used as a dumping ground, really. So we got skipped the other week. Um, cleaned it all out and I thought I'll get some of them cheap plastic shelves from Argos and just chuck them up but I went down in the garage um, yesterday or the day before I think it was and they started to tip to one side like that's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa so I don't think it'll be long till I'll go in and they'll all be snapped all over the place but I just think there's something I don't know I just I think it you know, looking around for a book, I think it's all part of the excitement of your modelling, you know. Plus, if you're reading Google and stuff, you don't... I mean, I know you don't 100% know if it's definite truth when you're looking through a book and that, but when there's pictures there to back it up and that more, so you, you probably know you're probably more percentage of chance being more accurate in a book than, than on Google or something. But that's not taking anything away from Google, of course, because obviously, you know, I've used that as well a lot of the time, but... I don't know, I just find looking through a book and buying a book all part of the why our hobby is so good really. Because it's just such a good thing to to look look for and look at that, like, you know. And plus you learn something as well, which is good. A book hook. <laughs> Only Stokies can say that properly. Book, Luke and Kook. Or Kooky or Booky. And then when you guys say it's actually book. Oh, Ian's in now. We've got a wingy, a wingy thing guy in now. It's typical of him to turn up late. <clears throat> Yaki da. Bass is a taff. Good rugby team though, mate. And best in Europe by far. Union, that is, and the proper code. Greg, not this girly rugby league crap that you play up north. <clears throat> Six Nations Champions World Cup this year as well. Touched the nerve there, Greg. Sorry, mate. Fashionable. Light shorts in the winter. Who's your team, Vass? Is it Car Cardiff? Because if it is Cardiff, I'm going to call you a Swansea fan like I do with um, Neil. Neil's a Swansea fan, I call him a Cardiff fan. <laughs> Mine just makes only like calling me a Stoke. I can't even say the word. It just makes it'll make me feel sick. Put the veil mug. Proper team. Soul crew, Cardiff City. I will say one thing, Vass. I'm not overly mad about your team. They always seem to be. I like Gaffer. I think Gaffer's great. Uh, you, uh, you know, I think he's a great Gaffer. I, I like him a lot. Um, but I don't know. Cardiff seem to bore me. I'm sorry, and I know you're probably going to slate me for it. I mean, I can't say anything. I'm a Vale fan. Every time I go Vale, I go stiff neck from watching them play boot the ball up to each end. But they just bore me, Cardiff do. And Paul's a Leeds fan, that's another one. Greg's a Leeds fan. Jesus. There's some serious 
Yeah, I, I, I love I do love football. That's I've got to tell you the truth. But I'm I'm a Ruggers man really, and the proper code again, Greg. Yeah, League Two, I know. But we'll give you boys a good run for your money if you came down to the mighty Vale Park, the Stadium of Light. In fact, I think we did, didn't we? When was it now? I'm almost certain I was there, actually, I think. Wasn't it 1996, 97, when we went on a good cup run? We not Everton out and we not Leeds out. Because um, I can remember Leeds bringing on little Gordon Strachan, second half. Um, and we beat you, I'm certain we did. And we knocked you out and then we, we got knocked out by someone total shite after we knocked out the big guns. Go on then, Tom. Who's your team? Man City. How's your lad doing, Paul, by the way? You're saying about when we met up at the Stoke model show, you're saying about him doing well at for his team, weren't you? And getting picked up by was it City? Um well, I was only thinking about him lad the other day because I was watching something about um, grassroots football. And um I was just uh, your lad popped into my head. I do Mike, how you doing, buddy? Ipswich, Jesus. I um Bloody hell, 1992 that was, Ian Monty, Chesterfield getting in with Kevin Davis up front. I can remember that myself. Um, Ipswich, yeah, I saw Ipswich at Stoke this season, actually. Um, I think it was uh, Gaffer's first game in charge, Paul, what's his name, Lambert, after he left, um, just after he got sat once he, or whatever, because he, he, he got sat from Stoke, didn't he, and then... Well, I saw him at I saw him at uh, Stoke, and um, it wasn't too bad. It was they weren't too bad really. Give Stoke a run for the money, and they shouldn't have won really. It's, they drew though, didn't they? I think actually, come to think of it, I can't remember. But I saw quite a few teams at Stoke this year because I had to go there with the work. So, but I saw Norwich this year as well. Norwich not a bad side. I know. You'd, you're probably going to curse me for saying that, Tom, but... <laughs> You've got a few more teams. What about Newport County, Vass? I saw them at Vale this year. They were quite a good side this year, they were. Oh, that was it. Yeah, 2-0, Tom, yeah. I've seen that many sides at Stoke this year through, through work. Um, I know we take the piss out of the arch rivals and stuff, but I must admit, I, I, I don't hate Stoke by any stretch of the imagination. You know, I like to see him do well, really. It's just the dickhead uh, fans that spoil it for him, isn't it, really? That, that me grow up a bit and understand that, you know, that um, football's a sport, not a fighting game, really. In fact, I better not talk about fighting, really, had we? Because I watched that at the weekend as well. I was a bit gutted uh, with AJ. He didn't look, he didn't half look very good at all. He looked tired and knackered to me um, from the other fights I've seen him fight. Yeah, I really, I did feel for AJ actually, but at least he's got the rematch first, Auntie. But if I was wilder, I'd be laughing at, I'd be laughing and thinking I've got, I've got the world in my hands now. I haven't got to prove anything to anybody. Yeah, I think he'll come back stronger blue, to be honest. I really do. But, in fact, in a way, it could, it could really do him quite good, actually, losing to who is like he did, because it it's a bit of a wake-up call for him, I think. Because I think a couple of fights he's he's laboured through him, and he, and he was a bit lucky to win, to be fair. Um, I mean, the best fight I think I've seen him fight, really, is... Um, Klitschko, I think that was probably the best fight where I've seen him because his chin got tested as well, and he and he and he got you know his uh, um, his chin did get tested in that that night, and he and he and he proved to a lot of people that he's because um, they were saying weren't they that 
if he came up against a real decent fight, whether his chin would take it or not, because he's got saying he's got a bit of a glass chin, but against Klitschko, I think that was proven not. But saying that, I mean, Ruiz is a big hitter, wasn't he? But he was a tiny bloke and he looked so out of shape as well, which was a big shock, you know, so. Um, but yeah, it was. It, it, I was a bit shocked, really, a bit upset, because I, I do like AJ, to be fair. So... I bet there's half of the people that are watching this falling asleep because we're talking about sport and not models. Forty-three minutes gone. The FA Cup final pissed me off as well. To be fair, sorry for swearing. So I really did think perhaps Watford might do something, but I just I kept looking at the side and I was thinking. Where on the pitch are Watford stronger just a little bit than City and they weren't. So it just bores me to death. Yeah, it's working, buddy. Yeah, the anxiety, I, I read about that as well. But all the money that these, these sportsmen get paid, and I know they're only human, but, you know, I think anxiety attacks and all that type of thing I don't know so but um, I did read that myself about AJ that he'd had a, something of a bit of a panic attack or something before the, the fight but I can't I, I think that's a bit of a get out close to be fair because I mean to look at Ruiz who was he really I mean I would if I was AJ and I was going into that fight I would not be worried I wouldn't be particularly worried about going into that fight compared to who I'd fought before. So I, I see, I think that's just a bit of a get out clause myself, but I did read that. But then again, you don't know, do you? Because we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So, you know, I really don't know. So, Paul, did you say something about Blackburn? Was it you, you lad? I, I picked up just a little bit of Blackburn, did you say? And that was your lad. Getting picked up by Blackburn. Sorry, mate, I'm sort of missed it because it, it, it comes up down here because it's the tablet that I'm using. And then it sort of fades out after about five seconds, so it's not. Yeah, could have could, well have done blue. Could come from the Ruiz camp, but saying that, if I was Ruiz, I would not be wanting to put any doubt on on what I've just done, you know. Um but then again I don't know that I will say one thing with the interviews after you have to explain that blue. Sorry mate, I don't get you. Um I think I will say one thing about Ruiz after the fight. I thought he was quite a gentleman actually and I thought he was really humble to be fair. And um I know he'd had a uh, hundred amateur fights before which is, is quite a few under the belt but <laughs> Mexican butter bean it was a bit small wasn't he but um, yeah I did get I, I, I do quite like it's like um, Vardy into Jamie Vardy in football coming from where he did was it Fleetwood and then hitting the big time and I will say one good thing about Vardy he seems to have um, Everton, Blackburn and City so you got a few of the big ones after him then Paul mind you if he's anything like yourself mate he's be a level headed guy keep his head on the on the ground you know so you know he's got good company a good dad to look him through so I'm sure we'll, we'll see him on match of the day soon yeah exactly so if, like far, you know, I do like I do like these um, stories of uh, you know smaller people coming through and making it big. And I will say one thing for Vardy as well. He see because uh, obviously a lot of footballs nowadays aren't they? They're all bloody mercenaries, you know. As soon as they get off, you know, I love this club. And what makes me sick is they run up scoring a goal and they kiss the badge and say, you know, and I just think. The moment that somebody offers them 10 quid more than they're on bloody wherever, that, that kissing of the badge will go to the next club and it just makes me sick. 
Whereas Vardy seems to, when Leicester won the league, you know, he, Leicester had three or four offers for him, didn't he? And he seemed to have kept his ground and stayed. And I do quite like that about him. He seems okay. But I appreciate that everybody nowadays. That's a shame, Baz. I appreciate everybody nowadays has got to make a living, you know, and, and who are we to sit here and say, you know, that we wouldn't, they, they, they are mercenaries, you know, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that and that, you know, I'm, I'm sure that majority of us would, you know, but I just think they get paid so much money that it's ridiculous. I mean, my next armed forces and I've seen bad things and I've worked for the government since, you know, come, when I came out, I've, I was, I've worked in the prison service and, I've got scars all over my arms from stuff that's happened and all over my body and not necessarily prison service, but what they pay footballers, they should, I think they should be paying to the true heroes in this life, which are the forces, the armed forces that are putting their lives on the line every day for us. And the A and you know, the A and E, the nurses, the the paramedics, um, the firemen and the policemen, you know, are, I really do think that that's where the money should be going. And I, and I think that if they capped the wages like they do in the rugby then and put it all towards the NHS and stuff like that and the, and the police force and that, then a lot of these big problems that we're having, uh, and then it will be sorted. But, you know, I, I'm by no means an educated guy, but if I can work it out and see it, then I can't understand why these top... Oxford educated and Cambridge, Cambridge edu educated idiots that are sitting in the Houses of Parliament can't see it. It just it, it bewilders me, you know. So but there you go. Moan and rant over. So does anybody, talking of sport, does anybody like the WWE, the wrestling? I suppose I'll get laughed at now, but I mean, my little boy Braden's got me. Uh, has got me into WWE again. I used to watch it years ago when Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker were. Um, I mean, early nineties, late nineties. You know, that's when I watched it, and I loved it. With like, I mean, some of the wrestlers, the Jake the Snake Roberts and the Honky Tonk Man and people like that, and the Bushwhackers. You know. But um, my, my lad Braden's got me back into it again now, and I watch Monday Night Raw and, and SmackDown on a Wednesday. Yeah, night, Mike. If you're up at four, make sure you say hello to me. <laughs> the big daddy. <laughs> yeah, giant haystacks. Remember them. Now, now, Ian. Yeah, but going back to the wrestling, I love um, Brock Lesnar now and uh, um, Braun Strowman because they actually seen the Legion of Doom, Tom. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that was the same time as the Bushwhackers, wasn't it? Because I can remember them having championship matches against each other. And then there was bloody, who were them two big fat ones? The earthquake in Typhoon or someone. That's better, Ian. That's a bit nicer. I bet you were boring. You're already talking about sport, Ian. That's when people break a sweat. Natural disasters, that's it. Brilliant stuff. I'm just having a look up here, actually. I did have um, a John Cena figure. I'll show you some of my figures. Can, you, can any of you remember that? Kendo Nagasaki, isn't that bloody... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I've been to the Millennium Stadium, Vass, uh, um, Sabutio, yes, Tom. Um, but we, we had a better atmosphere. It's when Vale were in the Autoglass Trophy, the LDV Fans Trophy final in 2001. Um, we had a way better 
um, atmosphere than you home Welsh rugby fans because there's no blow up sheep there. Sorry, one of us had to say, didn't they, tonight? No, but I've been to my new stadium. It's a, it's a good stadium. Yeah, very good. Timo Nagasaki. Yeah, it's not really, a lot of them died now, John. Yeah. A few of them have died recently as well, haven't they? Who to, Greg? Greg? Me and somebody else, or who to? Sorry. Another bad you. Loads of modelling chat going on here tonight, wasn't there? That's great. So I've turned down a repeat of Coronation Street for sports chat. Brilliant. Yes, Vass, Port Vale have got a team. Well, actually, I don't know if you can call them a team. They've just been bought out, actually, this week. Uh, last week. So I'm quite excited about next season for a change. Night, Doug. Have a good night, mate. The, Sh the Shanahan's Tom, um, the local. I can't think what he's into. He's, um, but she's she does a lot for charities local um they um the you know married man and wife but the big the big veil fans so that's quite a nice thing for a change um to have like actual supporters of the club running this because obviously you know that we'll, they'll only want the best for us which is which is good um but yeah the brought the the guy that we had before, Smurfweight, Norman Smurfweight, is the biggest criminal going. So, does that mean you're going in? Yeah, Tom, it's good that the local, which is it is great, you know, it really is. And they seem dead decent. If you go on my Facebook page, I've got them both as friends on Facebook, but, you know, they're, they're really good. Is that your impression of the Terminator, Ian? I'm going in a minute anyway, because I need me morning, uh, me nightly milk. Warm milk, is it? I don't know. Before I go to bed. I'm tired, I'm getting old. So what's everybody building at the minute? I know, Greg, you're building your own tent, aren't you? Which you need to do another update. Just because I like your videos, not because I want to see, you know, like <laughs> your pussy cat. Play board, John. I must admit, I've, I'm quite chuffed I've gone back in with some aircraft now. Good, Greg, good. Although saying that about aircraft, I am glad P61 Black. Yeah, I keep looking at one of them myself because I, I love planes that have got like greenhouses for cockpits, you know, like uh, the Heinkel and and stuff like that. You know, I, I love them where they got like a real big glass cockpit. I don't know why I just always like them. And the P61 is something I've looked at, like the Hobby Boss kit or um, Great Wall Hobby. Do they do one as well? I've seen somewhere. Um, but I wouldn't mind one of them. But I just seem to be... Are they uh, Dragon Paul? Bought a couple of fireflies recently, Paul. Bought the um, the Asuka um, British Sherman Firefly, um, the 5C, the VC. Um, and I've got the Dragon uh, Firefly VC. Um, 
I've just got them out, oh, and I've also got I've got the white box dragon, uh, firefly, and one, the all in one thirty fifth, and the Douglas K. He was uh, the gunner of this version. Just had a thing of fireflies recently in Sherman's, and the next one I want to get is the uh, the new Meng one. <laughs> That's true, Tom. That's why um, Edward are good. <laughs> or um, the other ones, I prefer the other ones. I've just used them for um, my Phantom. Uh, I don't know what they're called now. Oh, I've got loads of them down here. Montex. Yeah, I just we just got a uh, yeah. You got to get a mass set. I must admit that's the one thing I hate. Even like something simple, Tom, like uh, a Spitfire or something like that. I, I, I hate masking with a passion. So I'd rather just spend a couple of quid and get a bloody masking set for it. To tell you the truth. But well, I must admit, I can't wait for this IDF thing to start now because I've, I've had enough of aircraft at the minute. I just see, keep seeming to be blighted with either shit kits or it's me. I think it's probably me, to be honest, because every kit I've done this past year, wingy things I've, I've just had troubles with. So I just think it's me, to be fair. So obviously, the more practice you get, the better you get, I suppose. But just put this phantom's pissed me off recently so i've just gone i can't wait for armor now so there you go thanks tom i wish although i will say one thing about that lancaster um the local library here in cheadle um there's two cheadles there's cheadle in uh, stockport manchester and there's cheadle next to alton towers where I live, up in the sticks. Um, our local library um, asked to have that um, in the window because we had a flyover um, of the Lancaster. So um, they asked me to build one, so I did. And, uh, I, I gave them, I gave them that one, but I've got it back now. Um, I was quite, I was quite um, touched by that, really. Um, but thank you. It's very good of you to say. <laughs> I know what you mean, Vass. I just I built the um the SU thirty, is it? I'll get it for you. Oh, that's mine, the SU thirty flanker G, is it? Something like that. I know what you mean. Um But uh, yeah, they're a pain in the ass to 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 mask. This is the hobby boss kit. This is and I, this is basic. This is just basically just had a wash on it and that's it. I didn't do anything else to it. I, it's my first time weathering the um the engines like. Okay, Tom. Catch you soon, mate. Thanks for taking part, mate. It's been good of you. See you soon. All you need to do a video for so we can see these done. Thanks, Vass. Yeah, it's all right, mate. But again, it's like it was one. It's my first ever Russian jet, so and they're absolutely fucking huge. I mean, that's one forty-eight. But I mean, if you compare that with the Phantom, I mean, where's that there? But the, the width of them is just immense. You know, it just completely smothers it. So but this hobby boss kit was nice. Very nice actually. It's probably one of the nicest kits I've built. There was one fit issue which was the when you put the cockpit in, um you're supposed to have the wheels down with them. It doesn't want you to have the wheels up with the this hobby boss kit. Um 
but uh, I couldn't fit the cockpit in because I'd done something. I must have been I'd done it the wrong way around or something. So I had to do it with the, the wheels up. But yeah, it was all right. But I've, I'd definitely buy this kit again. Plus, I've left the seam on the cockpit as well because um, I've only just started to sort of learn how to get rid of the seams of, on the cockpits, and I don't particularly want to try it yet. Right, right, boys. It's been an hour or so now, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to get another brew, and then I'm going to go to bed. I think so. Say good night, everybody, to each other. Kiss each other good night, and just. Yes, mate. Do just build. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just, Paul. Just take part. Don't worry. You know. Can't be asked with all that unstarted kit business and that. Just, just join. You know, it's up to you. But uh, as long as you take part, mate, then take part. That'd be good. Yes. Good night, you big fairies. And whatever else. Kiss each other. Good night. With the notion of that Port Vale the greatest team ever. And in four years' time, we will be Champions League winners, Premier League winners, FA Cup winners, and League Cup winners. So guys, look after yourselves, all stay safe. Thank you very much for taking part. And you know what, I'm not taking part, but just coming on and have a bit of a chat. It's been good. I'll have to do it again, eh? I'm gonna leave fast to go back to his sheep now. Bah. So have a good night, boys, and everything. See you later, and may the force be with you guys. Ta -ra.